It was essentially Fuller's Field turned into a sacred ground for four days. For four days, it was a memorial to 58,307 young men who gave their lives in the defense of freedom. It was a memorial, but it was a memorial that allowed a lot of Vietnam veterans closure. They finally came to see their fellow veterans they may not have seen for 50 years, and hopefully they can now start to heal. All these men, mostly men and some women who answered the call, served their country, didn't ask questions because it was their duty and their honor. May we never forget the sacrifice. May we never forget those who served and did not return home. And may we always remember, especially now, that we still have men and women in our front lines protecting this great nation. We can never forget the people who came before us, and it's very important to bring it to new generations. Uh, really bringing it here is more to educate the community and give the families that are still living, and plus the veterans in Vietnam who didn't get the greatest welcome home, an opportunity to come and be a part of this, to come and if they've never made it to DC, uh, an opportunity to have that time to be with the wall, to have that time for, the, for themselves, to remember their friends. The wall came to see Gloucester, the wall and the 12 young men on the wall came to see their families and four of the families were there to say goodbye to them. The Wall That Heals is the official sponsor to the wall that's in D.C. The wall itself is in honor of the 58,000 men and women who gave their lives in Vietnam. This project came about from the collaboration of our United Veterans Council, which includes EM Vets, the Disabled American Veterans, the VFW, and the American Legion, wanting to bring the Vietnam Wall back to Gloucester, especially on a significant year that marks the 50th anniversary of its beginning and the 40th anniversary of its end. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watch Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say 
glitters that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. This is an especially significant day as 2015 is the 50th anniversary of the start of the Vietnam War and the 40th anniversary of the fall of Saigon and the end of the war. Two very bittersweet anniversaries to all those who fought and died in the name of freedom. We remember the famous quote of President John F. Kennedy in his inaugural address when he said, Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. More than 2.7 million Vietnam veterans answered his call to duty. More than 58,000 paid the price with their lives and the rest of us came home. The sacrifice and the service made by so many. The Vietnam Wall is a part of me, a lot of my friends now have served in Vietnam. Uh, a lot of pe people I'm close with have been in country and know someone who served. And in honor of a lot of them, they knew the 12 men that are on that wall. This city, which has exemplified service to community and country for nearly 400 years, is proud to host the wall that heals. And to pay tribute to the 58,195 soldiers, airmen, sailors, and marines whose names are etched on the wall. In particular, we honor the 12 men from Cape Ann who died in that long ago war who in their all too short lives exemplified the tra that tradition of service to nation. We, and we are proud as well to pay tribute to those who serve this day or who, their service completed, have returned to their homes to take up the tasks of peace. Twelve names are inscribed on a Vietnam memorial, but I fear that for many of us and for generations to come afterwards, we have forgotten who those deceased servicemen really were, as we have forgotten the country they fought in and shed their last price of drop because we asked them to. And so on the solemn occasion I'd like to present to you the 12 men who died in Vietnam during that conflict. Specialist Matthew Perry, born 1946, age 21. First Lieutenant David Bowman, born 1937, graduated Gloucester High School as 53. First Lieutenant Thomas Burke, born in 1941, graduated Gloucester High School in 1960. First Lieutenant Frank D'Amico, born in 1941. Private First Class William Hinckley, born in 1945, died 1967. Specialist Paul Knowlton, born 1947, graduated Gloucester High School, 1965. Private First Class Frank Kresge, born 1946, graduated Gloucester High School, 1965. Warrant Officer Stephen Lane, born 1946, graduated Gloucester High School, 1962, a helicopter pilot. Private First Class Robert E. Moore, born 1948, graduated Gloucester High School in 1966. 
Sergeant Salvatore Piscatello, born in 1945, graduated Gloucester High School in 1964. Hospital Corpsman Jeffrey Tyne, born in 1945, graduated Gloucester High School in 1964. First Lieutenant Arthur Wright, the third, born in 1943. I'm 58 years old, so I was just a little bit behind the Vietnam era as a kid growing up, but I had friends of mine who had older brothers who served in the conflict, and I was on the periphery of a lot of what they dealt with when they came home, which Mark talked about, I thought, eloquently. And that's always been something that stayed with me. All these men, mostly men and some women who answered the call, served their country, didn't ask questions because it was their duty and their honor. And when they got home, best case you could say they, would, they were met by an uninterested public. And in many cases they dealt with certainly misunderstanding and in some cases outright hostility. And that always stayed with me. And I remember when I was working in the Weldon Salucci administration in 1991, I was in the office, it was January or February, I don't remember, every day during that period of time was kind of a blur. But my office was right near City Hall Plaza and I heard a tumult going on outside my window. This was a Sunday afternoon. And I looked out the window and I saw what you could only call sort of a motley crew, makeshift parade, whatever you want to describe it as. But it was just a group of people who were marching up Tremont Street with signs that said, support our soldiers. And I remember thinking at the time that this was different. This was not what we had seen after Vietnam. And people had managed somehow, and I believe that the Vietnam generation basically taught people this, that even if you didn't support the war, you should support the soldier. And a few years later, I took my kids to a concert down at the Comcast Center, Tweeter Center, whatever your favorite name is for that place down in Mansfield that's impossible to get to and impossible to get out of. I took them to see, at their request, Blink-182, which is a band that, um, well, it's just suffice it to say, it wasn't my generation. <clears throat> so about halfway through the concert, Everybody's yelling and screaming and doing what they do at concerts. One of the leaders in the band says, hey everybody, I want you to be quiet. Which of course led to more yelling and screaming than there was before. And he said, no, no, I really mean this. I want you guys to be quiet. So the crowd got quiet and he pointed out into the audience and he said, there's a, there's a guy here in a uniform. Can you stand up? The guy stood up. And the band member looked out at him and he said, I just want to tell you how much we appreciate what you and all your brothers and sisters are doing for our country. And the place went nuts. And once again, I thought, well, for many of you, the legacy of Vietnam is complicated. It taught people a valuable lesson about how they should view those who serve. And it's played all the way through since that time, over and over again, in every conflict that this country's been involved in. Whatever you think about the war, the people who serve deserve your respect, your gratitude, and your thanks.
<clears throat> now, Bruce Crandall, like Tom Hudner and Tom Kelly, who were both mentioned previously, and many, many others have received the highest military honor this country can offer for bravery and heroism. But they don't wear it on their sleeve. They don't make a big deal out of it. They were just doing what they needed to do or felt they should do to serve their country and their colleagues on the field of battle. That is a classic representation of the American serviceman or servicewoman. All they're looking for is the satisfaction that comes from answering the call and an occasional thank you from their friends and family, community and country. Well, I'm thrilled to be here today to be able to say thank you to all those who served in the Vietnam conflict. God bless you all. And I hope this, along with the intervening years, has brought you some peace. Thank you. To see Governor Charlie Baker come to this opening ceremony. He's the first sitting governor that I know who has ever come to a wall dedication and speak from the heart and be willing to go down after he was done and personally say thank you to the four families. Pauline Piscatello, on behalf of a grateful nation, in behalf of a grateful country, and especially in behalf of your fellow citizens of Gloucester, we thank you for your sacrifice and we thank you for your son. Tony D'Amico. Anthony D'Amico, brother of Frank D'Amico. Thank you. Thank your family. You paid the ultimate sacrifice. You lost a loved one in response to the war. We will never forget. You were always in our memories. Thank you very much. Linda Kresge. Sorry, Korseski, I've been yelled at again. Mm -hmm. The brother, Frank, you too have paid the ultimate price. Your family has paid the ultimate price. We are better for it, we are safer for it, but we can never erase the pain. But on behalf of the city of Gloucester, we would like to thank you with a small token for the ultimate sacrifice that you made and your brother made. Where's Jane Amaral hiding? We gotta go in the other way. No, no stay, stay. Ms. Amaral has been present in every more day ceremony I've ever had and I've always honored to have her present Janet, you always have a special place in my heart, and your family has a special place in my heart, as does the other gold star. I was the lucky one. I came back. You weren't so lucky. Your son did come back, and we thank you. Mrs. Piscatello came there every day to see her son and to say goodbye to her son. No matter how tough it was, no matter how sad it was, she came because she had an opportunity for once in a long time to be able to close, be close to her son. And hopefully it gave her some closure. We can never take back what was lost. Um, and we just can, all we can do is try to express our support, our gratitude. She as much as a son paid the ultimate sacrifice. Others, enough others like myself, we paid some. They paid it all. God, look down on me from heaven so you can maybe see I'm not the killer that created, but the man you intended me to be. 
Through the darkness of storms and be are behind me, in my jungle it always rains. The droplets falling on my pavement brings back 30 years of pain. I know my friends I lost were up in heaven because they were all too young to sin. Their exploded bodies now fully intact, the agent orange washed from their skin. God looked down at me from up there so you can maybe know Quezon and Ashu Valley that happened years ago. Over 30 years of no one knowing, over 30 years and still no one will care. For if democracy was so important then, why is the yellow man still there? As these years make me older, I try to search for my peace of mind. I face a hot turning colder, cause I cannot forget the war I left behind. God look down at me from heaven and see me in my beautiful house. Forgive me for all those search and destroys. Forgive me for what I did in Laos. If you are a forgiving God, then please understand my last pain. You cannot take my soul from me when I die. I left it in the cold jungle rain. And to all my friends up in heaven, in D.C., a great wall is built in your honor. Memorial for you soldiers that died. My cynical thoughts faded upon my first visit as I knelt at this wall and cried. For all you nameless Joes, all up in heaven, and all you faceless Joes here on this wall, for the Marines, the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force, may have God mercy on us all. It was 50 years ago this spring when the first son of Gloucester fell on the battlefield of Vietnam. Captain David Winslow Bowman, a 28-year-old Army Ranger officer, was killed on April 6th, 1965, in the Da Nang province. Like many officers stationed in Southeast Asia during the early years of conflict, Captain Bowman was a member of the 44th Ranger Battalion, served as an advisor on a mission to assist Vietnam troops. According to military records, Captain Bowman displayed profound heroism on the day he died dashing into the line of fire in defense of Vietnamese soldiers under attack from a Viet Cong battalion. He led a Vietnamese assault against the guerrillas in the face of heavy fire, directing airstrikes while taking aim at his surgeons. As Captain Bowman awaited arrival of more men from the 44th Ranger Battalion, he left the relative safety of a position behind an armored vehicle to direct airstrikes, only to be cut down by enemy fire. President Lyndon B. Johnson posthumously awarded Captain Bowman the Distinguished Service Cross for extraordinary heroism. The city of Gloucester takes great pride in hosting the wall that heals. We have a long history of military service to our nation, and a very high percentage of our men and women chose to serve, more so than most communities of similar size. Our residents and leaders are here with open hearts to the veterans, their families, friends, and citizens who will come to pay their respects. We will never forget the heavy price paid for our freedoms by Captain Bowman and so many more during a difficult time in our history. We did what our country asked us to do. If we had to be the sacrificial lambs so they would take care of the Iraq and Afghanistan veterans, it was well worth it. Let me thank the Vietnam veterans who did not receive the welcome home that I received. And let me thank you from the bottom of my heart and my family for allowing us to give you a thank you today, to giving us the opportunity to say we will not treat future generation of veterans the way that we were treated. So to that Vietnam veterans, thank you so very much for your service, your sacrifice, and welcome home. We will now be lowering the flag to signify the end of this event. Tell the guard, retrieve the flag. Post. Guards, up out, face.
detail. Forward, march. <laughs> 